Hi, this is Farm Mom, and I'm here with our goat surprise. And I recently received a message from a friend about how we do our milking for human consumption. So I am going to do my best to make a little video because this is March 21st of 2020, and we're under travel restrictions and kids out of school and that kind of thing. So I thought it might be easier to make a video for my friend. And if it comes out okay, I'll share it with our friends in YouTube land. And maybe it'll be a help to someone um, out there who is needing to milk a goat. So my friend's situation is that they have uh, New Zealand Kikos and boar goats. They don't actually have dairy goats, but they've been having to milk one of them because uh, one of the mothers rejected the babies. So their idea is that right now when there's not a lot of milk on the shelves that maybe they should just keep milking um, that dough after the, the babies are weaned, then they can use the milk if they need it. So I start out with my dip and this is a jar. Um, it just has uh, warm water and a few drops of a mild dish soap in it. So I first want to wash the udder, and I do that by putting the, the jar of soapy water up over the teat and jiggling it around a little bit, both sides. And then I have a clean uh, towel, and I dry each teat off. If their udders are particularly muddy, it might take a couple of times or possibly even dipping the a whole wet rag in, but right now her udder's pretty clean. If you keep your stalls clean, then the udders don't get super dirty. The next thing I do for the sanitary milk production is that I squirt two squirts out from each teat, and this allows any bacteria that has gotten up into the teat canal to be washed out because the uh, sanitizing solution doesn't really get up into the teat all that quickly. So then I'm using a stainless steel bucket and my bucket isn't actually an official milk bucket. It was uh, purchased several years ago and was a stainless steel flour canister and I've been using it as my milk bucket for about 15 years so you do what you can do and it works. So normally I'd be milking with both hands but since I am not very technologically inclined I am using one hand to cover holding the phone. So I will be back in just a moment. So I'm back and I have pretty much stripped um, all the milk out of Surprise's udder. She's empty now. Just a, another little squirt or two there. And so then the last thing that I do with her is that I have a post dip that will help to keep her udder healthy. So this is another jar and it's water with about three squirts of a povidone iodine solution like you would find in the first aid area um, at any of your big box stores that have first aid supplies. And I dip her teats in this. And then that just stays on and that helps to prevent any um, germs from getting up into the teat canal um, either from me or from the bedding and will help prevent um, problems with her udder like mastitis. So that's all I'm really doing out here. If the, the some quite often when you milk a goat you will get a little bit of hair in the milk if those hairs bother you. Um, it is possible to go ahead and clip the udder, clip all the hair off the udder um, here. And uh, so when we show the goats, we do that anyway. We show them with a, a clipped udder and it does make it a, a little more hygienic if, if having, you know, the hairs um, 
in there bother you, they do filter out when you filter the milk. So on to the next part. So the next part is that because there are a few little hairs and things like that in the goat milk, the next uh, step is to filter it. So what I have here is I have my clean canning jars that um, I'm getting ready to put the milk in. These are half gallon. And then I have a filter funnel. It has a filter on the inside that will pop out. And then we're going to put in a milk filter. Um, these are regular uh, milk filters that you can get at most of the farm stores. And that goes in the filter and then the ring will hold that down. So once you have your filter in place, you just put your milk through the filter. And that filters out any hair or small debris that happened to get in. Now obviously if you have a goat that puts her foot in the milk pail, you're not going to be able to filter all that and have it be really what you would want for human consumption. All right, so there we go. And then we put caps on our jars and then they go into the refrigerator or into the cheese pot or whatever their next step is and so in a nutshell that's how I milk my goats for human consumption